welcome to the channel. I finally took myself a day off. I put on my tourist hat and went to go visit Chichen Itza, the uh, ancient Mayan site. But the Mayans had many ways of sacrificing people and one of them was again them loaded up on hallucinogens and have them jump into the sinkhole called a cenote. Well I had wanted to go to Chichen Itza for many years now and I was, I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to go and to visit but seeing this site it does give you a pause I mean it was a very violent society if it wasn't having your head lopped off or your heart chopped out of your living body you know they lived a pretty tough life so if you find yourself being led to an altar like this, I suggest you run away. Uno día, uno día, ¿cuánto? Me lleva cinco días hacer uno. Cinco días para sí, uno? Oh. Una pieza. Sí, pero. Okay. Tengo que romperle todo. Okay. Uh, ¿Qué tipo de madera? Es cedro. Well, the cynical part of me thanks yeah they're probably all just made in china but i stood there for a while to make sure he was actually carving a mask and then i bought this one and then i got busy looking for tequila and hiring a new security team next i observed some beers being placed under unusual hazards so i stepped in and did something about it and i drank one Okay, I just finished my dive, so there's no footage of me in the water, but this is where I'm at. This is a cenote, which is basically a sinkhole. I do not know if it's fed by a natural spring as well, but... But it's pretty well done. I'd recommend this to anybody visiting. So, you know how I talked about you get by with a help, little help from your friends? Well, today I'm going to go help somebody out a little bit, believe it or not. Somebody who needs a depth sounder. And so I have an old one that doesn't work in my boat. So, brand new, brand new, but it didn't work in my boat's application. So, I'm going to roll that over real fast. Yeah, the weather is kind of sketchy today. Overcast, lots of clouds. So I haven't heard a lot of tourist boats going by, and I don't suppose that's a big surprise, but I'm going out. Okay, this uh, dry bag has got the spare part and my phone inside, and that goes in the lanyard around my neck. Oh my god. Yeah, so what are the odds of this old man getting into that thing without <laughs> hurting himself? Or if we're smart, we just wait a minute. Okay, now the key is to sit your ass down dead center where the center board goes. If you do that, everything is going to be all right. In the... Okay, so I think my target boat is the last one on the right over there. And uh, I'm going to get Rowan in a second here. And I chose right now to come out there because uh, the water is flat. The wind is very, very light. I can get over there and boat probably five to ten minutes. Yes, you'd think that was Henry Fonda's boat, but it's not. And there's Tautog, second in the row. The third boat is, uh, is being delivered from Panama to the USA. And, uh... Hey there, so Aside from going to Chichen Itza, which I really enjoyed, and from taking the dinghy out on the days when it's not too windy, um, I, I have been busy. I've been waiting primarily because I couldn't get the haul out spot until 
the 11th of November. So that's the bottom line. If, if, you, if the boatyard can't take you, they can't take you, you know, and there were some communication challenges involved with that. We're not going to talk about that. Um, and then we had some discussions about pricing, which we are not, are not going to talk about here unless you really want to know. Um, bottom line is, I couldn't get hauled out until the 11th of November, and as soon as I realized that, and as soon as I came to terms with that, I, I had a pizza, and then I just got busy, and I started forecasting the work, just like we did in the nuclear business when you're heading into an outage. You, you really get down into the gory details of what does the work look like, and I realized one obvious weakness of mine, and it was that this boat did not have good enough bilge access. That's the bottom line. 99% um, of the deck plates were heavily, heavily screwed down in place. I mean, they're removable, but not easily. So I spent a lot of time the last two weeks digging up these deck plates and cutting them at the reasonable location so that they could be picked up and moved as needed to get access to the hull on the inside. That's necessary when you're going to try to talk when you're talking about abandoning hull fittings or rebuilding hull fittings, whichever it's going to be. It'll be a little bit of each for me in this boatyard. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Primarily we removed the air conditioner unit. That took a bit of work and that presents a bit of risk because there was open to, open to the sea. There, there, it's salt water cooled and it's below the water line so you always have to be conscious of that. And there's another spot where I know I'm going to abandon some fittings and I knew that the hull access was terrible. So that is really what I've been up to is, uh, is uh, working inside the boat primarily digging up deck plates and cleaning the bilge, you know, yay, fun, fun, fun. So, but we're now at the point where there's really, you know, we're, we're getting there. So we're going to stop our work now for a couple of reasons. First, I hurt myself again. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm filming this on Tuesday the 9th, okay? Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to haul the boat over, we're going to drive, sail the boat over to uh, Punta Sam. And then I'm going to get into the yard, so I'll spend the night there, and then in the morning we'll haul me out on Thursday. And then we begin the haul-out phase, we're going to try to get a lot of work done in two weeks. That's my target, is get all the work done in two weeks. But I need to get myself better first, because I can't work with my hands right now. I've got a deep cut on this finger because of a mishap. I, I fell down when I was running, and a bad bruise on this palm, which is my sore thumb anyway, a bad bruise on this side, a bad sprain on this wrist, so I really can't grip with this arm. So I've got two days to get more healthy. And, uh, and because when we get to that boatyard on Thursday, the first couple days of the job all belong to me. Now, I, I've got to do all the demo. I didn't want to pay anybody to do work that I can do myself. So if it's, if it's destruction work, hell, I can destroy stuff. So I'll do that much of that as I can. And then I'll get to the point where we bring in their epoxy experts and we're going to patch the holes that I create. That's the real thrust of the work. And one of the holes is going to be for a depth sounder. So um, so that's the depth sounder should be the easiest part of the job, presuming that the depth sounder gets here. So, so let me back up. So in addition to waiting for my slip in the boatyard, you also have to wait for parts because uh, it's not so easy to find parts here and it's not so easy to get them. So well, I'm like at 90% confidence that we're going to get the new depth sounder transducer delivered in time to get me out of the boatyard. There's kind of a risk there. The seacock valves, I don't know. So I'm very reluctant to rip out the old seacocks until I know that I have a success path to get new ones in. I do have a backup plan, but it's not preferred for the cockpit drains. That's the worst valves. And um, we'll, we'll just take that as we go, and I'll make the best decisions I can. But for now, let's get on with episode 35. Let's carry on. Um, and this, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that we did to get the decks, the air conditioner on, and the decks ready to go. So, enjoy. Chat again in a minute here. Okay, so here's the bottom line. The access to the bilge is poor. I've got this hole right there in the galley area. You can't really reach in there. You sure can stick your head in there. We've got the top of the fuel tank, but you don't have access to open the fuel tank properly. This is just a hole into the open bilge, and I use it for storage, as you can see. This is the main bilge itself. 
That's where all the water collects and goes to the bottom. Don't even look at the wiring to the bilge pumps. I didn't do it. That's going to get corrected. And this is what I call, I hate to say bad words, the last shithole. It is just awful looking and I'm afraid to touch anything because I, it's all below the water line and I'm afraid of the flood. Oh, that hull fitting, the nasty one down there. So that hull fitting down there, that's going to be abandoned. The transducer holes are going to be abandoned. If that transducer hole is exactly two inches, I might reuse the hole for a new depth sounder. But all of the rest of this gear down there is going to be abandoned. Although I'm going to keep all of these brass pieces that look so awful, including the valve, and going to try to recondition them. If they're carbon steel, like this one obviously is, you know, then it's going away. Same with that one. Just shit stuff, you know. It's got like these carbon steel handles that break right off. But whatever. Um, there's a pump that probably that might work. I'll test it and see. And I'll keep it as a spare. I might even keep the old bilge pump as a spare just in case. Get rid of that piece of wood that the uh, pump is mounted on and paint out this area. And it'll look pretty darn good when we're done. That's the goal. I will point out that I am going to uh, install someplace else in this bilge a, a new seacock, a new hole. I mean, I might recondition this valve and uh, reuse it. I don't know. If I can recondition it and remount it someplace else, I will. I want this area to be no holes, okay? Nothing at all. Because I might install a gray water system someday. You just never know. And so this would be where it would probably go. But well, today, I'm going after one of the last two demobilization jobs on the boat. The water heater is gone. The old refrigerator compressor is gone. The old battery system is gone. All of that stuff is gone. The only things that remain are the air conditioner, which does not work, which is right here, and the toilet. So there's the shitter and the there's a couple of bags of stuff, but there's a holding tank at the bottom and all the hoses and there's a hull valve. All that's getting demobilized when I get to the haul out. But I decided <clears throat> that today I'm going to remove the air conditioner and demob as much of that as I can with the boat still in the water. The only risk is that those white hoses are still full of water open to the sea. And this is right about approximately the uh, height of the water line. Probably a little bit below the water line. It's just based on my guessing. So either way, I want this out of here because I want to be able to remove that white deck down below. I want to remove this just absolute disaster of carpentry work here. I mean, it just looks like absolute shit. I just am embarrassed. I don't know what the hell that is. I just don't get it. You know, I just don't. It's like an old drawer front that they used. And the bottom of this one, <clears throat> the bottom of this piece is water damaged. So that's absolutely got to go. The louvered pieces can be retained <clears throat> in that teak uh, frame around it. <clears throat> and, you know, the electronic part's going to go away. We need to demo the AC so that I understand how much water damage has been done to the underlying frames. And I don't know the answer to that yet. So today, shut the valves. We'll first kill the power, determ it from the AC panel. Then I'm going to shut the valves and determ the hoses and put corks in the ends. And maybe even oh, time in a position that they're elevated. And then just do a physical removal. It shouldn't be that bad. That white hose down there is just a condensate drain, <clears throat> and it's obvious that probably due to excessive dog fur in the boat, that once overflowed and was allowed by the previous owner to just remain soaking wet, and that's what caused all the wood damage. Down here, this crumbled apart. Down here, you can see that's moving. I don't know what the hell we got here. This deck plate is damaged, so yeah. Yeah, so there'll be a big celebration for me, authorized by the captain, of course, um, when I have finally cleared away the last of the demolition jobs and I have removed the last shithole. I'm just, you know, I'll be thankful. 
So, but it's a great time to do it because I've got five more days before I haul out. And if you got time, you know, and I'm here, my girlfriend's not here, I'm just kind of bachelor, and there's, there's only so much you can drink, and so, you know, and you can only exercise so much. So, you know, this is a good thing to do, just take care of work, so that when she gets here, we'll be able to focus on just sailing and sailing. So. Well, my hands hurt too much to play the ukulele well. So, I'll just tell you that every one of these floor plugs comes up fairly easily you know there's a uh, little teak plugs above every screw about every six inches or so i had to pop out the plug unscrew the screw about 80 percent of the screws came out clean and that means about 20 percent of them i had to drill the heads off and it's just part of the deal but underneath you see it really is just a two by four frame boat it's no different than if you built a shed or something it's nice clear pine it's just clear pine two by fours and most are in immaculate condition so i'm very pleased with that part and once they're up the access is pretty good okay starting from the head compartment i'm facing aft there's a bed and i have every single deck plate that can be removed removed and right now they all just lift up they all had been heavily screwed in place and i've got them all taken up and this is why, so I can see, so I can see, you know, if water's coming into the boat and do something about it. You have to have access, in my opinion. So, so, this is the base of the mast, and you can see how the mast is supported, okay? You can see some cables going up the mast, antennas, lights, stuff like that. The round transducer here is going to be, that hole will be reused, I believe, for my new depth sounder. But the valve and that uh, teardrop shaped piece of wood are going to go away. And you'll see shiny fiberglass in its place. Pardon me. Here's the main bilge. It's not pretty. I'm not proud of it. But that's the main bilge right now. Two pumps. There's one at the very bottom and there's one further up at the top. The higher capacity one is at the top. The very, very thick hose. So this hose is the suction for the manual bilge pump, the pumper, you know, the hand pump. This is the area under here where the air conditioner used to be. And I think we're gonna leave this side of the cabinetry gone so we can retain good access. This area will become 100% storage. This is the fuel tank. Yeah, the, the, just stuff here and a lot of dirt is what's down there. And under the galley. So, not bad. Yeah, so uh, thank you for watching the episode. Um, and I think we're pretty much there. Um, I'll end a cl I'll close of, uh, the episode with some uh, the Day of the Dead stuff that we did here on the island. But first, um, while I was doing this work on the boat, tearing out air conditioners, for instance, um, I heard my name called. And that's normal in this marina where if somebody needs your attention, they'll maybe rattle your anchor or they'll knock on your hull to get your attention. And that's what happened. And uh, it was, and I, one day I'm minding my own business and I hear Michelle call. And I stick my head out of here and I go look and she's looking down. And so I'll, so I'll show you what we found and what we did about it. And with that, that concludes the episode. So take care everybody. Enjoy. Bye. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Okay, we got one. We got a big one. Some people say that that's not good for bicycles. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's rinse it off again. It doesn't make you sad. I don't know what does. Little children. This one's one week old.